what's up you guys thank you for clicking on the video uh, today we are going to do ring gap so uh, this is kind of one of the first steps you want to do when you're building an engine and it's a very uh, crucial step in building an engine now I've already done this once before and uh, I didn't mess it up but I decided to change the uh, ring gap specs that I'm gonna run so I had to buy a new set of rings so we're gonna be doing this over again uh, which works out because I made a video Lost the footage, so now I'm making a new video with uh, new footage and new ring. So let me uh, let me explain to you first what ring gap is, why it's important, and all that sort of stuff. In case you don't know, um, these are piston rings right here. Um, there's three different types of piston rings. You got your uh, compression ring or top ring, your second ring, which is uh, to scrape oil off the cylinder walls, and then you have your oil control ring. These rings go in these grooves on the side of the piston. So this top groove is for the top ring, the second groove is for the second ring, and this bottom groove that's thicker, that's for the oil control rings. In a perfect world, this this piston would fit perfectly in the cylinder and it wouldn't have any space outside and it would just make complete compression and you wouldn't have any oil burn issues or blow by. But uh, it's an imperfect world and uh you know physics states that um heat added to objects expands them so uh if i put this in here you can see it rattles around so there's room around there since it's not a perfect fit into the cylinder you're gonna have all the air you're trying to compress leaving past it so you need to have something to seal it that's also you know flexible so you have a piston ring which has a gap and when you put it in the cylinder this gap closes and uh, what the kind of the goal with gapping your pistons is is you want to get this gap as close as you can to zero without them butting up together so that you can get your full compression and all your oil systems working well this is scraping oil off but basically the most important ring is the top ring they're all important you want to get them all to spec but the most important is the top ring. If you don't get this right, your engine is not going to make any power. It's not going to make any compression. So when you buy your pistons, you should get some information sheets and stuff like that. Um, this is what came with the pistons, uh, which also came with rings. And then there was also kind of the same instructions for the rings in here. Now, what it tells you is, is, you know, kind of the usage of the motor and uh, what size ring gap to run. So you multiply the bore by whatever this number states. Now, this is kind of a generic um, scale right here, and they give it a lot of extra room to save their butts, so you can't blame them if your motor blows up. So, you know, ring gaps, ring ends butting up isn't going to be the issue for your engine blowing up. That's why they give you those numbers. So what I did is I called a um, Subaru shop that actually the people that did the machining on this block, and these are the numbers that they gave me, 15 thousandths and 18 thousandths. And when I did this with the Street Moderate Turbo Nitrous, it was coming out at like 19 and a half thousandths and uh, 21 thousandths. So these are a lot closer gaps, but um, stock Subaru gaps are 13 thousandths and 15 thousandths. So these are a little bit bigger than stock. Now I was also told that these specs have a lot of room for error and they're also, you know, intended for a cast iron block with, you know, forged pistons but um, I guess aluminum doesn't expand as much as steel or cast iron does so you can run tighter clearances on these Subarus with the aluminum blocks and the forged pistons and whatever material these uh, rings are made out of but there's a lot of like material science that goes into deciding what ring gap it is so if I were you I would just call a shop like I did and ask them what ring gap they run on their engines make sure you're asking them for your specific engine Got JE forged pistons, so we're going to be running JE Pro Seal rings. Right, so what you're going to need for this is a set of feeler gauges, uh, a piston, uh, and then your rings, of course, and some uh, some oil or some sort of lubricant to uh, coat the cylinder walls in. All right, so uh, we're going to do the top ring first. Now, what you're going to want to do is get your oil. Um, I'm just using a five weight thirty oil, which is the you know factory oil. And you just want to kind of coat the inside of the cylinder. You don't need to do the whole thing, but just like the top half where you're sticking the ring. The oil is just there to uh, keep the piston rings from scratching the cylinders when you're pulling them in and out. So I just grab my first top ring. Just make sure there's no debris on the edges. And then you're just going to squeeze it together. 
and place it inside like so and then you grab your piston and this is just to make sure that it's perfectly level and you just find a flat spot on the piston and line it up so that you know that the uh, the ring is level. So if you look at that gap, it's pretty much non-existent. It's a very small gap. So I'm going to grab the feeler gauges and get an initial reading, see what it's at. So most OEM manufacturers, the rings come pre-gapped. Uh, but when you buy rings from an aftermarket manufacturer, they come oversized. So if you were to just put these in the car like they are, you'd blow up your engine. So you want to make sure you do the ring gap. But the reason they send you oversized rings is so that the engine builder can decide what ring gap they run based on, you know, other parameters of the build. So ring gap depends on the block material, the piston material, the ring material, depends on the fuel you're running, it depends on forced induction, you know, all this stuff, compression ratios, everything has to do with rings. So you want to consult a professional uh, who has experience building varieties of engines and make sure you know what is a safe ring gap to run for the type of engine you're building. Okay, so this is my initial reading size right here, uh, 0 0.007 inches, uh, which is 0.18 millimeters. So uh, we still got a little bit to go, so I am going to have to remove material in order to get this to the size I want it. They make special uh, ring grinders, but uh, I don't want to buy one, so... Uh, I'm just going to use a cutoff wheel on a Dremel and I'm just going to slowly just buzz this edge and take off just a little bit of material. You can use whatever you want. File's probably the safest method because it's the slowest, but it's also the slowest. It takes a long time. But uh, you just want to be careful not to remove too much. You want to do a lot of, uh, you know, grind check, grind check. Make sure you don't go over the spec you want. kind of want to note where you uh, you know set the Dremel up uh, speed wise and you know the pressure the time and all that stuff so that next time you can you know grind off a little bit more depending on how much the first time removed but now I'm just going to come in with the sandpaper sand in on an angle on the edges just to uh, you know make sure there's no burrs so you can see you know there's a slight grit to the edge but uh, I removed the burrs, so it's not gonna scratch the piston. So the one we did before, uh, it removed enough material to make this fit all the way through. Uh, not enough to make the second one fit, which is 0 .008 inches. Uh, so we gotta go through all of these before we get to the one we're looking at. So one thing to make sure of when you are doing this is to only grind one side of the ring. You don't want to grind both because then you won't know how to how square it is. So you want one side to reference it so that you can keep the uh, you know edges parallel. So last time I did four little grinds with the uh, the Dremel. So this time I'm going to do eight and see how much that removes.
Okay, so um, I got it to the right spec at that time. So this is the 15 thousandths uh, feeler gauge. So let me, there you go. So you can see, so you can see it's in there and it moves somewhat freely, but there's a little bit of drag. That's kind of what you're looking for. Just a little bit of drag, like uh, pulling a piece of paper out from a stack of magazines or something. Just a little bit of drag in there. Um, it's hard to do with one hand, but uh, if you try the, the size above it, the 16, it doesn't even start going in there. But the 15 goes all the way in. And I can move it without disturbing the ring. So, this is the size we're at. I am just going to clean up the burrs one last time, make sure it's completely clean. And then uh, I'm going to move on to the rest of the rings, and I will be back once I'm done with those. So, here is a close-up of what the ring gap. So there's a close-up of what the ring gap looks like. Um, that's 15 thousandths ring gap. Yours is probably going to be a different size, but just to give you a reference, that's what 15 thousandths looks like. And you want your uh, edges to be parallel like this, if you can see. Okay, so I got the uh, second ring installed. Now, uh, this ring is pre-gapped to 16 thousandths. So you can see 16 thousandths goes in there with a little bit of drag. That's why you always want to check the ring before you grind it because the top rings and the bottom or the second rings aren't going to be the same gap out of the box. So if I were to assume that these were the same gap as the, these ones and just start grinding away at it, I would go over. So that's why you want to check before, because now I know that it's already at 16 thousandths. I only need to remove two thousandths of an inch. So I barely got to grind this at all. Knowing that, I'll only hit it like maybe four times, and that should get me to the, the right size I need. Okay, so if you take a look at the second ring now, it looks like we are right at 18 thousandths. It's a little bit of drag, but it goes in and the 19 doesn't go in. So uh, we're probably right at 18 thousandths. So that's what we need. And that was all I did was like, I think it was like six little buzzes on the uh, Dremel tool. And that was it. Get you a close look at that. Perfectly parallel ring gap right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the piston rings and I will be back once I'm done with that. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see, but I got all the uh, top rings installed and gapped except number four, which I'm gonna show you how to properly uh, install a ring to know that it's um, flat and you know square. So it's really crucial to make sure that the ring is flat and it's not like sideways in the cylinder when you measure it because if it's tilted up like this, this gap's gonna be larger. If it's tilted down like this, the gap's gonna be larger. So you want it to be perfectly square so that you get the correct measurement for the gap. Otherwise, uh, if you just kind of throw it in there and you know you think it's flat, uh, it's gonna be a bigger, or it's gonna be a tighter gap than you want it to be because you're measuring 15 thousandths and it's actually 13 thousandths and then you blow your motor. So it's really important that you get it to be perfectly flat. So an easy way to do this is you take one of your pistons and you put one of your second rings or something on you can either put it in the second ring groove or the oil ring groove which i did and this is just to make like a stopper for how deep the piston goes in so with this stopper on there i'm going to take the ring i'm measuring of course we want the cylinder oiled too so i already oiled it make sure you're putting it in the right side up and you want to get it in there and kind of get it up towards the top uh, enough so that when you set the piston in on top of it so it's not level yet but um, the piston the rings not touching the cylinder so then you're just gonna want to try to push it down evenly and you push it down until it stops and the piston stops because you know the ring is keeping it from going down any further so now the ring is down all the way this gap all the way across now you can measure it properly uh, and know that it's right. So this one's micro, uh, feeler gauge in at 15 thousandths. I also installed all these other ones using that same method. And you can see with the 15 thousandths gauge, they all go in and slide out with just a little bit of drag. That one might be a little tight. 
uh, yeah, just double check your ring gaps because it's the most important thing, probably one of the most important things you uh, need to do on the engine when you're building it. Hey guys, so I got all the uh, the rings bagged and tagged uh, for each cylinder to match up with the pistons. So that's pretty much it for the, uh, the ring gap uh, procedure. It's not too complicated, it's just very crucial that you do it right. So uh, just to kind of reiterate the uh, main points, uh, make sure that the ring is seated flat in the cylinder so that the ends are properly gapped. And make sure to, you know, grind a little bit off, check back, grind a little bit off, check back. It's a lot of grinding and checking, but that's how you get a perfect ring gap. And this time around, I got all the same ring gaps for all the rings on all the cylinders. So it's going to be a very smooth running engine and it shouldn't have any oil burning issues. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Hope some of you are learning some stuff. Uh, you know, I'm making them for you guys and for me so that I can look back and see, you know, this in 10 years or whatever and, you know, go, oh yeah, there's me building my Subaru engine. Um, and also, you know, if I forget how something goes together, I can look back at the videos, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep making these videos regardless, but I hope you guys are enjoying them. I'm enjoying making them. Uh, they're a little bit more fun. <clears throat> I can kind of be in here, you know, at nighttime and working when I have the lights in the room. It's not really revolving my schedule around filming. I can just kind of work on my engine and film while I'm doing it. It's not too much extra, you know, struggle or hassle. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, press like, all that good stuff. I will see you on the next one.